How do you answer the question, why do bad things happen to good people? I understand that we live in a fallen world and are reclaiming dominion, but I want to understand what my role is in that process. You know, that's the, that's the question that's been asked for 2,000 years, you yeah. know. Um, I don't know that I have a good answer. I mean, we, you know, we live we live in a fallen world, as yeah. as the question already stated. We just live in a world where there's evil, mm -hmm. and um, we're learning to navigate that stuff. You know, the one time the disciples didn't get a breakthrough, that boy, mm -hmm. you know, Mark uh, nine, they didn't get a healing. If that were to happen today, the group would walk away saying it just wasn't God's timing. Mm. But the parent had Jesus there, yeah. and Jesus brought deliverance, and the disciples went to him afterwards to find out why it didn't work. I think we got to find out more often why it didn't work. Mm -hmm. You know, if, instead of assuming it wasn't his timing, mm -hmm. instead of assuming you know we're trying to make something happen it really isn't his will, realize the will of God's pretty clear. He wants people free, mm -hmm. and uh, and I th I think I think we need to know how to ask the questions better. Mm -hmm. Ask the ask the Lord the question. How come, how come this isn't working? It, it yeah. does in your book. The promise is there. The assignment you gave us. Do as you did. That's all clear. Yeah. You know how come it's not working? And and learn in that in that interaction how to in, increase our odds, so to speak. You know, mm -hmm. I think it's a part of the process. Why do bad things happen to good people? Just because we're we're living in a in a mm -hmm. in an evil environment. But it doesn't mean that I, while I believe that's true, it doesn't mean I'm I'm now prisoner to an evil environment. Yeah. You absolutely. know that I am just. You're a victim. Yeah, I'm a victim. I don't like that either. Mm -hmm. So I have to own up to the fact that you know I, I live in a place and it's not fair. Mm -hmm. You know things things yeah. that are just not fair happen. Yeah. That's that's true. Yeah. But if something happens to me that's unfair, I do have an answer. And I have access to the one who heals and repairs and redeems. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas somebody who doesn't know the Lord, they have to just kind of try to make sense of craziness, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So it, I, I, it just consoles me a bit to know that I'm not a victim. Yeah. I, I also there's this other part that maybe this is a can of worms for now because we don't probably have the time for it. But there's a certain amount, for example, for our, our children. There's a certain amount of safety and protection that we provide for them with prayer support, mm. you know, that really insulates them. Mm -hmm. Grandchildren, it, it, it does it. It just creates a safety around them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it says that um, James was beheaded, was killed, and when Peter was in prison, the church prayed for him, mm -hmm. and he was released. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think that prayerlessness makes people vulnerable to mm. being under the influence of their environment, whereas learning how to cover each other in prayer keeps each other safe. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's a role there of just intercessory it's, prayer. It's at least a part of the situation. It's a part. It's yeah. not the only not answer. Because mm -hmm. it would be horrible to say, well, I, I yeah. had this horrible, who wasn't praying for yeah, me? Exactly. It was my <laughs> fault that, yeah. that this happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's not the right answer. But there's yeah. still, you know, still part of the equation. Yeah. There's something about prayer support that creates a safety. Mm -hmm. 